Greetings, I'm John the Spirit, we've got some passive crafting to do, and welcome to New Omni Factory Super Shorts. Look at the power of symmetry, and the power of drawer slaves, and the power of interfaces and storage buses. Oh my gosh, what could any of this mean? Today we're going to create many different types of rods, plates, and wires using all the same machines and multiple at once. Scratch that, reverse it, everything I'm doing here is probably wrong. It's so wrong that I might even set up an applied energistics network that spans my base, which is something I am very not interested in doing, but it's okay because those are usually pretty important anyway. Alright, let's see. These two interfaces are going to have crafting cards, and they're going to try and stalk, so the right's going to be wires, and the right is going to be rods. Applied Energistics 2 has auto-crafting, so you can set up different ways to auto-craft items actively. So a crafting card will automatically request the crafting of an item if the item isn't already in the network for you. Crafting cards are made with basic cards, which are made like so. There are a couple components we need for crafting things. The first of these is to use blank patterns, which are made with fine silver wires, polyethylene sheets, and tier 3 circuits. There's a reason I made all these tier 3 circuits over here. As microprocessors are technically pretty cheap for me right now, I'm just going to make a ton, a ton, a ton of black patterns. To encode patterns, you need a pattern terminal. One pattern terminal. You can make two kinds of patterns, a crafting pattern or a general processing pattern that lets you put any number of items into the left and get any number of items on the right. For example, let's say I want to automate copper wire. I want to throw 6 into my system at once, so I'll plug 6 into one side of the pattern terminal, 12 into the other, grab a pattern, and then encode it by pressing right here. Then I'll press encode pattern to get the pattern. In dev, with the handy dandy Dynamistics mod by Utro, you can press R on a processing pattern to see what's inside of it. Now that I have this pattern, I need to place it in an interface that is hooked up to a machine where I or, or an inventory where I want the items to go when I request the craft. I'm going to put those items into this basic drawer, and I'm going to slap a drawer controller on it, and then put two controller slaves to the right. You may recall the drawer controllers and controller slaves allow you to access a whole drawer network from any of the blocks. So if I had some Greg Tech cover that could automatically extract from an adjacent inventory, like the robot arm, I could place it on these wire mills and they would pull from these controllers. I have made 64 LV robot arms. But I would not like these arms to be pulling everything out of one slave into one wire mill. I want any items that I put into the store to be distributed across all the wire mills. So first I'm going to place my robot arms 1, 2, 3 on the right side of the wire mills. I'll interact with this one, and we're going to set it to mode import, and we're going to say that it has to keep exact a specific number of items. That number of items I want is going to be one. So we'll pull in one item at a time, and it will only allow one item to be in the inventory. Note, it does count the whole inventory, so if there's something in the output, the output will block the robot arm from pulling anything. Let's watch it with these copper ingots. We can see that they got distributed evenly across the wire mills. Now the question is, why am I not using supply exact so that the items go into the inventory's uh, multiple items at once? Well, I am told that they might not distribute evenly. Clearly they did in this case, but there's something called a race condition in computer science that implies that this might not happen. In order for Applied Energistics 2 to believe a craft has been satisfied, you need to either use an import bus to import the items into the network, or plug them all in into an interface. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is to use this interface as the crafting interface, which means I'll put my encoded pattern here and it'll insert things into this drawer, and I'm also going to insert items into this interface, so that when this interface requests things like copper wires, hopefully the copper wires will be placed into it by plugging them into this interface. Uh, but we'll see if that happens, we're going to have to experiment and find out. I've got all these wire mills exporting on Cyan and inserting into this interface. You'll note that this conduit network is not connected with the outer conduit network. I'm actually thinking it's going to be this section that's not connected to the outer network, and this section will be connected, so I've split it up. To make Applied Energistics 2 actually do crafting, you need to install a crafting CPU, which usually consists of a crafting coprocessing unit and crafting storage. I'm just going to make mine out of a 1K crafting storage, and we'll see if it's sufficient. And again, these are pretty easy to make. 3 1K crafting storage. We'll place ours right here to link up the network, and now we have a tiny little network across this S shape. This chest will be fed using a limited item filter with the resources we need to create any of the wires. For now, we'll just be inserting our copper ingots into here. 
I hooked up the network with power, and I put six copper in here, and it looks like it started the craft according to the crafting status. So the last thing I need to do is actually power the things. So if we plug this in, we'll see if the crafting request gets satisfied. So these should get extracted into the interface, and then yes, the crafting status is gone, and we have stocked 12 copper wires in our ME interface. Amazing! Now I'm filling up this chest with copper. If I remove 12 copper wires from here, it should start a crafting recipe, and boom, we'll get it all, and it'll fill up the interface again. I'm probably going to set this to store about 36. Now I can do this with tin wires, and annealed copper wires, and fine copper wires, and fine tin wires, and everything else I want to do that's wires. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set some conduits here to extract out of this interface, always active, into this storage drawer. This is a stack limit of 8, so what's going to happen is in the end, I'll have 8 stacks of copper wires. Okay, that's a bit weird, I don't know why this isn't working. Alright, the problem is that I'm looping items. Um, this ME interface is trying to pull copper wires from the network to fill itself up. Um, and it'll fill itself up from this drawer, because this drawer has copper wires in it. So if I extract from this interface into the drawer controller, it will just insert itself right back into the interface rather than requesting another craft. Once I pulled out the storage bus, it started filling up the basic drawer. And now, this is actually crafting up to 36 copper wires at once, which I am very proud of, so thank you for being amazing. Now, note, this is not needed at this point in the game, but I create so many motors and other things like that, that it is good, for me at least, in particular, to have all of these items already stocked for me, because I don't like, like waiting around to make them. If they're already there, I am much happier, and this is a small time investment for the time saving I'll get, rather than having to batch craft these things constantly. So I'm pretty happy with this system. Additionally, things like all these four, these five wire mills are going to get placed into this system as opposed to sitting around here, and thus they won't do the Greg Tech lagging thing. Now this is a convoluted solution to a convoluted problem that I created for myself by passive crafting all these wires so that I could create the um, circuits passively. It is entirely possible to do this mod pack without passive crafting things like these wires, and just creating the SMG components when you need them and shoving them into your assembling machines, but I prefer to passively craft some of these things. Batch crafting can be pretty satisfying, but it is even nicer for me when I already have a lot of the materials on stock. Here's a pattern for fine copper wires. I'll shove it into my ME interface, and then I'm going to supply copper wires to this chest. These storage buses on this chest will be extract only, so I don't accidentally get things being put into this chest. But I'm going to limit it, I didn't filter this chest on my 64 copper wires, and then auto extract from the drawer controller, and they should go in here, and then when I request this to be full with 12 fine copper wires, it'll automatically start making them. As it turns out, it is actually a good idea to have this bi-directional. The reason for this is that Applied Energistics seems to not know what to do with extra items that get put into the interface after you've already filled up the interface that's been requesting them. And so it needs to put them somewhere, until then it gets really confused. So now I'm putting them into this chest. Incidentally, what this means is that I no longer need to filter this chest on copper wires, the copper wires will go straight in. And then hopefully, as soon as these copper wires get used up, it's going to craft copper wires in order to make the fine copper wires. We'll see if that happens in a moment. Yes! Yes! Amazing! Alright, what this means is that we can now do this for annealed copper, electrum, and red alloy wires. So don't mind me while I do that. Behold, all those wire mills from here before have been completely made obsolete by this system, and it should lag slightly less. Depending on the person, you may want to parallelize at IV or EV, but not at MV. For me, this is just because I would like to batch craft less. As a summary of how this system works, in order to stock these doors with the amount of wires I want, I have an interface with a crafting car that's automatically crafting the items that I want to get extracted by item conduits and put into the drawers. I'm inserting the basic materials required into this chest and using it as a storage bus for intermediate items so that they can be used for crafts. And this is the important part, the part that will be more useful for most people, because it involves parallelizing machines. Instead of crafting into machines, I craft into a drawer and use drawer slaves so that all the machines have access. All the machines have robot arms pulling exact amounts into themselves from the drawer slaves using this drawer. You can use this for many different types of setups whenever you need to parallelize. Most parallelization happens after you get the creative portable tank, but if ever you need to parallelize, I think this is a great way to do it. I've learned it from the Omnifactory Discord server, and I'm very thankful for it. 
To further increase this system, I can stack it vertically. So I can stack interfaces supplying items vertically to the drawer system. I can stack the drawer system vertically. I can add more chests vertically to store more items. And then I can add more interfaces vertically and more drawers vertically that all connect to the store controller. This will stack about 12 high. I'll never need it to be that high though. Next up, I'm going to replicate the system for rods, and then I'm going to do something similar for plates using block cutting machines instead of compressors because block cutting machines are objectively superior. Our lathe setup is very similar to our wire setup, just symmetrical. All the same things, I've got patterns making 12 rods with 6 ingots, and I've got auto supplying the ingots here, and then I'm putting everything in the ME interface, and they're slowly filling up their drawers, which I've actually increased the size of for these since I need these at a little, slightly higher rate than the wires. My block cutting machines will all need lubricant, so I'm going to set all these three fluid filters to lubricant. Aluminum, steel, and wrought iron are what I'm going to need the most of, so I'm going to install a 2 times storage upgrade here, just like I did here. I haven't set up a multi-smelter that's going to be modular yet, but that'll be one of my next projects, and then I'll be able to do wrought iron. I'll add copper, electrical steel, electrum, and red alloy next. But with these projects done, I think that's about it for today's episode. In the next episode, I want to set up multi-smelter crafting and possibly atomic reconstructor crafting and do some other minor projects. But before I do any of that, I want to get hot canthal and then hot nichrome ingots so that I can improve the energy efficiency and the speed of my multi-smelters. This requires a vacuum freezer, my next project. Again, this is not a necessary thing for you guys to do. This is something I wanted to do to save myself from a lot of batch crafting, particularly when I start crafting microminers. But we'll see how it goes. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.